The Our Coast project looks at safeguarding coastal energy generation and supply. We're interested in the energy sector because a lot of its infrastructure is on the coast. We've developed a web-based tool available to everyone to explore future changes in coastal flood hazard. The reason why we focused on the coast is that there's an array of energy infrastructure located in the coastal zone. At the same time, there's also a whole host of different activities that are located in the coast. Industry, transport, people, tourism. So what we find as a result of what we do in the Arcos project is of relevance to a much wider set of stakeholders. Arcos provides important information on where to best locate future energy infrastructure. Also providing information on where there are critical thresholds of sea level rise where we will expect significant changes in flood risk. We've explored and can provide information on innovative means for coastal protection and also when's the best time to invest in building resilience within current energy infrastructure. The hazards that need to be um, considered for flood risk are uh, extreme water levels um, from storm surges and uh, wave overtopping and high river flows. Flood maps are more than a, a simple overlay. Flood water depth doesn't mean very much to uh, coastal communities. Um, I've rearranged these flood depths into brick layers um, that are uh, aggregated into red, yellow and green uh, areas and that allows uh, coastal communities to see how big the impact would be on the side of their house. To assess the economic impact from flooding, uh, what a depth damage curve is used which converts the flood depth into a cost value for each, for every point on the flood, uh, the flood plane. The normal approach typically used by governments or business would be just to look at when the costs exceed the benefits, a simple cost-benefit analysis. However, for me, because I'm interested in larger societal questions, I want to take into account how it impacts on individuals. So first of all, I literally have to go out and ask people, what is the value of electricity supply to you? How do you use electricity in your um, household, in your everyday life? and try to determine what the actual value, not the cost, but the actual value um, of electricity is to their everyday life. When you bring the social science together with the physical science, I think that's when you have something very, very powerful. The physical science will say, okay, this is when we're probably going to have flooding. This is when the infrastructure is going to um, become um, vulnerable. While I say at different points, um, yes, but the public are willing to pay or have a desire to ensure that it never gets to that point. Instead of just looking at what's the impact of sea level rise on infrastructure, I'm looking at the impact of sea level rise on people how their electricity, how their, how their daily activities uh, would be hindered if we didn't have a constant supply of energy. Uh, flood maps are a really useful tool to look at what-if scenarios. Uh, the tool we've developed for this project, uh, it's an online tool, so all the maps can be viewed uh, with any internet browser. It allows you to view the maps uh, with a slider bar so you can vary the sea levels and vary the storms and see what the response is to flooding. The 500-year perspective of the Decision Support Tool adds value to what is currently done in terms of building resilience within shoreline management strategies. Climate-related hazards are a concern to the energy sector, mainly focus around flooding. Our substations by design are typically on the areas which are defended long-term from sea level erosion, uh, sea level rise and erosion. Um, however, there are secondary concerns around the routes to and from those sites, that's both for the power flow and for access. The provision of the flood depths, the flood flows, and the longer term climate change, sea level rise aspects of the data gives us an element of when we can actually start to think about moving away from protection and relocation. So it gives us a long term uh, strategic planning application tool. So basically we can actually be able to say, right, we can defend this site until X, then we'll have to look at other options. The National Nuclear Laboratory is a uh, nuclear technology and science provider um, for the UK's nuclear industry. 
NNL is perhaps uniquely located in the nuclear industry in the UK between academia and industry. So our involvement in the Arcois project is extremely important in that we're able to translate results and findings into real application in the nuclear industry itself. Nuclear power stations in the UK were traditionally sited on the coast for really for two reasons. One is the provision of a lot of water which is required for cooling um, and the second reason is that uh, many of the coastal locations are away from centres of population. A lot of decisions within local authorities are on political cycles of maybe five years. A lot of strategic plans maybe go up to 15, 20 years. On the coast we have to plan over 100 years to allow for things such as sea level rise and that's very difficult to communicate to decision makers and to the communities. It's important that research such as our coast is shared with decision makers and with communities because whilst it's important that we have access to that information, it's important that our communities understand why decisions are being taken, how the coast is changing, um, because ultimately it's for them that we're undertaking work and management of the coast. Wyre suffers from both fluvial flooding and surface water flooding, but the main problem is tidal flooding. Um, there are about 30,000 properties at risk of flooding um, from a variety of sources. I'm responsible for the defences from the Blackpool boundary to Fleetwood, which is about 6.8 6 kilometres of defences. The, the biggest concern for me is whether we can have sustainable development on the coastline. What we're trying to do is, is plan for that future and, where necessary, move communities out of that danger zone into more sustainable areas. A key product from Arcos is an online decision support tool that enables stakeholders in the community to explore our outputs in terms of flood maps, new models for looking at coastal flood risk and coastal response to extreme events. We've discovered that the location of nuclear power stations are resilient to extreme events. We've also discovered that you can examine storms that have the same probability, but because they're generated by combinations of wave height and extreme water level, they have very different resulting flooding extents and depths. We've also discovered that flooding can result from a combination of high river flows, wave overtopping and extreme water level that produce floods of very different extent to what you might expect if those factors were operating independently.